Cushing reflex or Cushing triad is a vasopressor response of the brain to increased intracranial pressure. It's usually seen in terminal stages of head injury or acute hemorrhagic infarct. So what happens in the Cushing triad? Since it's a triad, it's composed of three signs, first raised pulse pressure, second bradycardia and third shame, Stokes respiration or deep hollow irregular breathing. In this video, we will look at each of the component of Cushing reflex along with its clinical significance and management of patient in emergency care unit. So, let's get started. In patients with acute hematoma or stroke or having a tumor and basically swelling of the brain, there will be increased intracranial pressure. Here the pressure in the brain rises above the mean arterial pressure, which is abnormal because it will restrict the perfusion. As the ICP rises, it eventually surpasses the mean arterial pressure, which must be higher than the ICP for the brain tissue to get appropriate oxygenation. The cerebral perfusion pressure, or the amount of blood and oxygen delivered to the brain, is reduced as a result of the pressure difference, resulting in the brain obtaining insufficient oxygen, also known as a brain ischemia. The sympathetic nervous system is triggered to compensate for the lack of oxygen, resulting in an increase in systemic blood pressure and an initial increase in heart rate. When blood pressure rises, the carotid and aortic baroreceptors activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which causes the heart rhythm to slow down. The brain stem may begin to malfunction as the pressure in the brain rises, leading to erratic breathing followed by intervals when breathing stops completely. This progression indicates that the prognosis is deteriorating. So, what are the treatment goals in this case largely depend on the cause of raised ICP? Investigations like CT scan to rule out hemorrhagic transformation and CSF studies to rule out infections should be carried out as early as possible. Once confirmed the cause should be treated accordingly. In cases of raised intracranial pressure, mannitol, an osmotic diuretic is used most commonly to reduce intracranial pressure. Other medications include, diuretics that are furosemide and steroids are also used. Hyperventilation, or breathing very fast, and laying with the head elevated, i.e. the reverse Trendelenburg position, is also recommended to help lower ICP. In some cases, drainage of the extra cerebrospinal fluid may be required to decrease the pressure. Rarely, a craniotomy, or removal of a small portion of the skull, may be performed to alleviate the rising pressure. Herniation can occur if left untreated, causing brain tissue to shift to the opposite side of the brain or down to the brainstem also called, uncle herniation. Uncle herniation can cause a variety of symptoms, including loss of reflexes, loss of consciousness, and death. Cushing's triad can also cause infarction or brain tissue death. As a result, rapid cerebral pressure decompression is required before treating the underlying reasons. Thanks for watching. In this neuro assessment series, we have explained lots of scales and signs every clinical practitioner needs to know and much more. Please subscribe and support us. Thank you.